something. The year was 1981. You were just poofing up the big hair or whatever. I think we were still still wearing some flare jeans back then. But uh, a, a, a Dr. John Braccio uh, had some fresh ideas and decided to open an office of regional psychological services in East Lansing and begin helping people. And he still does to this very day and joins us now every Tuesday morning. As a matter of fact, hey, it's our What's Up Doc segment. Doc Braccio, nice to have you back with us. Well, Mike, listen, always a pleasure talking to you, my friend. And I think we have a good topic today. You know, why why do people have affairs? You know, why do they yeah. get into ex, you know, relationships? Well, most of us are certainly aware of a person or persons in marriage or monogamous relationships that have intimate relationships with others. Well, the opportunities are many in such a fast-paced society as we live. And the electronic world we live in today allows these relationships to be sexual, emotional and a combination of the two without even being together physically. So my purpose here is to talk about, or is not talk about why people do this, okay, in a way, okay? Yeah. I guess, when we, but when we think about it, let me give reasons in terms of why this happens. They're, they're amazingly varied and they can range from shallow sexual relationships to intense online, you know, activity. So I guess reasons include persons with an incapacity to commit to a monogamous relationship and never will. Risk takers, okay, they're risk takers. They enjoy the activity and hope not to get caught. They like living on the edge. They're people just mm-hmm. um, just like that. Compulsive sex addicts, those who have affairs while under the influence of alcohol or drugs, persons who feel a lack of affection and the need to get it outside of the relationship, a breakdown of communication between the spouses or partners that leads to the person feeling they need this and will get it one way or another. Poor self-esteem and the need to feel better about self by having another person pay them reinforcement and attention. Concerns relating to conversations not taking place that feel are needed and they going to occur somewhere else and outside of the home. Major physical or mental conditions of a partner, such as severe pain, Parkinson's disease, MS, schizophrenia, or dementia, which can lead to someone finding sexual and emotional satisfaction outside of the home. And then children, having children, as much as we may love children, but it can lead to so much of the focus of the spouse or partner on the children that the person feels abandoned and obtains sexual and emotional satisfaction outside of the home. Physical separation for extended periods of time. The spouse or partner feels the need for in-person sexual and emotional intimacy apart from the phone or visual communication. Now, the point here is not to indicate any of these reasons as well as many others justify someone breaking the commitment to to a marriage or monogamous relationship. No, the point is that affairs are incredibly common, Mike. And it's critical that spouses and partners continually work on their relationship on a daily basis and really be aware that strong friendship is the glue that keeps relationships together. And when persons take each other for granted and don't treat each other like dear friends and let other priorities take precedence over their relationships, well, then affairs are often, sadly, you know, the result. So this is really very common in our society. And it's uh you know it leads to the fact that 50% of marriages fail so yeah yeah it, it, so it is not really a happy type of a thing in terms of if we if we do believe that relationships people ought to stay together and granted we all realize that people don't get along and there's a real breakdown that 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 divorce can be something helpful useful on the other hand it is amazing how often persons will have relationships will have affairs just um, just just to do it. You know, the risk of yeah. want to do it. Yeah. And then and now you can do things on the internet. Um, you don't even have to see anybody anymore. So just have wow. these Is that considered an affair? I guess it would be. You're having an affair with the internet, so to so to speak. Your your well, love, your attentions aren't toward your, you know, significant other. Well that, that that appears to be the case. You know, I talk to people periodically I hadn't really thought about it that much. Um, not necessarily that they're outside of a relationship, but basically maintain relationships through the phone to people they may never meet, yeah. but they they satisfy each other. <laughs> and, you know, but it's a 
it's a strange new world. How does that sound, Mike? I'm getting yeah. more and more so. Yeah, we're in a, we're in a, a time. So I think the the main thing is, uh, and again, we're not, um, you know, our purpose here is not how to, to die today is not about saving, salvaging relationships. It's really about um, the fact that these are occurring and what the reasons are. And, and a lot of people really don't think about it. They don't realize that um, people just, uh, a lot of people just enjoy the risk. You know, they just want to do it or they just oh, yeah. can't, they, yeah. they don't feel contained in the relationship or they feel that uh, they, they're playing second fiddle or they're yeah. always fighting or they're always arguing. Yeah, I had a, uh, a I, and I'm not going to say any names, and they, they don't even live around here. And this was years ago, and now this person is married the second time around, but very happily. But a friend of mine, uh, when the first time around was going sour, and he, by the way, growing up, we grew up together. Growing up, he was like the Casanova guy, right? All, and he was a good-looking dude, good-looking dude. And everybody, I hated to hanging around him because, you know, you as a young guy, we're in our 20s, you you go out to the club and all the women around this guy, and you're like, hey, over here, yo, over here. But uh, that being said, he knew it, and he was very charismatic. He went into sales. He now owns his own string of businesses, but be that as it may. He told me one time, he said, Mike, it's because I asked him, I said, why, why do you do this? You're, you're happily married. And he actually had children at the time. It still does. And he said, it's the chase. He said, it's the thrill of the chase. And I said, well, but you're ruining people's lives for the thrill of the chase. But you, you listed that, Doc, in some of your causes there. People feel it that deep, the thrill of the chase. Could you not go skydiving instead? Well, you know, I'm sure there are people that go skydiving, and that would certainly be better for the relationship. Though so they're just um, people and just want variety, want change, take risks. Some people are really you you even fit it in the category of the narcissist or the sociopath. They have no sense of right or wrong, and others just fall into them. You know, there can be a distance, separation from people, and and children really in the and just um, the anxiety of the moment and pressures. And, some people do to drugs, do to um, alcohol, or and ju- just opportunities. You know, people are on the go and they run into an opportunity, and they really they either don't have the strength or they don't want to resist. And then there are people that just uh, don't care. I mean, they're willing to take yeah. the risk. They'll do it. And so, they'll say, "Well, or the opportunity happens." Yeah, they take it. I I I, I dare to to guess, uh, Doc. In your practice, you see this a lot. Uh, yes. As you said, it's it's really prevalent. But what is the fix? I guess first of all, you got to realize the person themselves. Like with anything, you got to realize there's a problem and what category it falls into. Do you like the thrill of the chase? Are you not communicating enough? Have you fallen apart? Have you gotten? You know what I mean? Well, so there true. is that no is one true. fix for it, is there? Well, there's no one fix. No, in fact, I'm. Still, we we can take a segment where you just talk about that if you want to salvage it. No, the question is, people have to make decisions in life. Hey, they're the roads that we take. Isn't that true? One road yeah. is yeah. to stay on the path. Okay. The other is to you know be honest enough and, and just say you know this isn't working. Let's move forward or let's make changes. Um, but we can say what what would be a good thing to do. You know, not to break bonds. But people are still going to do this. It's just being aware that it does that does really occur. And yeah. The, and there are a lot of reasons. There, there, there's so many. There's so many reasons. Distance can be a reason. We could. We, and if we yeah. were to sit, sit down and talk about people we've known or circumstances where this, these have occurred, it, it, it's, it's a remarkable series. And then there's just, you know, people work together. They interact together. They can run into each other on a vacation, a business trip, or whatever, or yeah. just at the local grocery store or at the ice cream parlor. You know, it's it's a it's huh. amazing. And then let's not underestimate also electronic people that fall in love on the Internet. Okay. Oh, and yeah. So- it's a whole other thing. And, you know, we had if we had a whole show just to do to this, we could fill it up, I'm sure. But our time is up. It came up fast. It always does. It always comes up too fast, Doc. Dr. John Braccio, Regional Psychological Services in East Lansing. This touches your life 
or anything else, he's there for you. DrJohnB.com on the web. Hey, Doc, uh, let's do this again Tuesday next week, all right? We will do it and maintain friendship in your relationships. How does that sound? In marriages and monogamous relationships, that's the key. Talk to you later, buddy. Bye-bye. Thanks a lot. See ya. 1320 WILS back in a minute.